Hey, welcome back. So on my desk, I have all kinds of these filament samples. I also have a test print inside each one of them. So Ziltec reached out and said, we have our brand new fun little formula. We have all these materials that just showed up from the processor. We want to share them with you. So here they are. Uh, I have, it looks like nine of the dual color silk and I have six of the tri-color silk PLA. And essentially, if you're wondering what dual and tri is all about, when you look at the filament, you'll see either two colors or three colors. And what I've done is they only gave me 10 meters of each, so I really wasn't sure what to do for a model. So being me, and here at Word is cool headquarters, we're big fans of cats. So I thought, well, you know what? For every one of these guys, I will print a cat. It will be a 60% scale version of the one I usually print. And I'm going to show those off in the light box here so you can see that it's, it's very interesting the way these prints came out because, uh, the, well, you'll just have to see. It's just interesting because the way that those colors mix based on the direction of the print and the orientation, the colors shift. And it's a very interesting thing to see. So I got the light box set up. I got the camera set up. I'm going to show you all kinds of prints and give you some backstory. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay, let's begin. So first of all, if you've never seen me before, my name is Paul. This is my channel where Nerd is Cool, all about 3D printing, cosplay, you name it. Ta-da, here I am. If you're not already a subscriber, I would appreciate it very much if you hit that button down below and become one. So that said, let me talk about the Silk PLA here from Ziltec. Um, so a few things that they sent me some information on, it's actually on all the samples. If you purchase the samples, you'll see these instructions as well too. Uh, they recommend, first of all, a print temperature range of between 200 and 230, which is pretty common for most PLA, so it's a pretty wide area. Uh, with silk, you want to print slower, so 60 millimeters a second or slower. Uh, on these prints that you're going to see here, uh, I did all of mine at 50 millimeters a second. And one of the things I'll show you here on the camera is I did a temperature tower and I just did one to cover all of these. And the th thing you want to do with a temperature tower is don't just concentrate on the bridging piece. That's that don't judge just that. What you want to do is you want to look at the sides here like I'm doing right here and you want to see, you know, some of these areas here, what, what came out the best. So for all of the prints, what I did is I found that 215 was the ideal temperature. So what I did is I did the first layer at 217, a little bit warmer. Uh, I had the bed set to 60 degrees Celsius and then off we went. So that, um, and the only other thing I can mention here is that the samples <laughs> have a lot of tension in them. Um, my printers are in enclosures, so if I tried printing with just the, you know, this little hanging out the back, you know, dangling, it would tangle. And even putting it on a spool, I have a bunch of spare ones, you know, the, the ones that have been used up, I hang on to these. And I found it way easier to, it was, took a little bit of work, but slowly but surely, wind this onto a, a spool and then feed it into the printer and no jams that way. You will find that going from something like this onto a spool, Sometimes you're going to wind up with a real cat's cradle or not. Just go slow, untangle, grumble to yourself, <laughs> and then move on. Um, printing it, that was really, really easy. I just used three machines here. I used my Sierra 10 Mini that I recently rebuilt. I used the Ma uh, Mingda Magician X2. I also used one of my Arion Thinker machines. that I upgraded that a few uh, months ago. And I just let them rip. So each print took about four hours. Uh, one of the things that I did on mine is I did adaptive layers using Cura. Um, I used a 0.2 layer height, uh, and you'll see that you'll see that in the face area uh, with these prints. Uh, the Cura added a few more finer layers, like at 0.1, and then everything else was 0.2 or even 0.3 when I got up toward the top of the ear. So just giving you a heads up of what you're going to see. Okay, I got the light box set up. I got the DSLR set up. I brought the ISO down because the light box is really, really bright and the auto uh, white balance was kind of going crazy. So I have it set so that you'll really see the colors and it'll really pop, you'll like it. 
Um, nothing fancy. The light box, I think, ran me a hundred bucks at B&H. And the turntable, you can spend a lot of money on a photography turntable. This is literally from Hobby Lobby, the kind of thing you put a cake on and then spin it around through the frosting. Um, 12 bucks. So for those of you that have YouTube channels or are like doing video, <laughs> that's the trick. Before I go on, one other thing I want to mention, check down below for coupon codes. We have a lot of coupon codes that can save you money from Slice Engineering, Ziltech, whose stuff we're showing off today. And we also have uh, Wham Bam, uh, who make the fantastic bed surfaces, which came in really handy with these prints. So check them out and save some money. With that, let's check out the prints. Okay, first up, this is a dual color silk, and this is called Texas Sky. I'm just gonna let that spin around. And as you can see from the filament, uh, it basically, uh, it's blue on one side and purple on the other. So it's an interesting mix of two colors. Okay, this is called Exotic Orchard and it basically has like pine green on one side and a very shiny purple on the other. This is a dual color silk series. This is called Lemonade Breeze and you can see that the filament is blue on one side and very, very fluorescent greenish yellow on the other. And let's get this guy moving around here. Very interesting how it goes from one color to the other. Okay, this one is also dual colored and this is called Aqua Serenity. And it's got a purple and again, that dark green. It's, like I said, it's, it's, this is not your eyes. It really does have that color change. Another dual color. This is Sunset Serenade. So you have kind of a red and kind of an orange here. Of all the prints, this one came out a little stringy. This is called King's Cake. For those of you that are Batman fans, it's a very Jokerish kind of color, you know, the green and purple. And uh, there's that and that. Okay, dual color silk. This is Crimson Noir. Basically goes from red to black. Okay, this one is called Shadow Blade, and essentially it's a gray and a bl light black. So it almost looks like it doesn't change color, but it, it does fade in there. This one's one of the more interesting mixes. Okay, dual color, and this one is Emerald Waters. And uh, we have green on one side and blue on the other. Okay, and this next batch, these are the tricolor. So here we go. So the way these filaments look, you, uh, you look around there and you can see that there are three colors in there. And let's look at the print. This one is called Regal Vineyard. Okay, tricolor. This is called Vibrant Treasures. And before I go here, you can see the, the filament. So there's definitely a lot of colors going on here. Okay, this is called Tropical Breeze. There's a lot going on with that one. And... A 
This one is called Silk Kaleidoscope. It's called Sunny Indigo. So what do you think? Interesting colors. Like I said, most of these uh, materials, you know, you're not gonna use these probably for any kind of, you know, like in my world, you know, cosplay or stuff like that. But if you're looking to make some fun items or some very interesting uh, color displacement, these things are very interesting. Very easy to print, uh, nothing too crazy about it. Again, like I said, the hardest part I had was getting them on the spool, <laughs> just because of the tangles. Uh, but obviously when you buy a full uh, spool, you won't have that issue whatsoever. So be sure to check them out on their website. And if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to help you out. That's it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed this video and seeing all these things on display. Remember, you can find me on social media. I post on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and, of course, the website. And that's it for this time. Remember, this is where nerdy is cool and please print safely. Thank you.